Look at this, it seems like they're having some sort of festivities and we are about to get shaken down. You got pesos, you got coins for these guys. They don't have the drag queen. Where's the drag queen? I like the drag queen lady. How you doing, sir? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you again. We were back here yesterday. It's going nice. Just gotta be sure not to hit them. That would be an insurance claim. And uh, I did not bother to get insurance upon coming into Mexico. But they got the creepy clown. Hello, how you doing? How you doing, guys? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you again. How you doing? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, that wind is pretty bad. Okay, here we go. Welcome to another episode of Crime Pays, but Biden, he doesn't. We're in beautiful Nuevo Leon. Uh, we keep getting harassed by transitos. They're like the small, small time cops. You know, they're mostly transit street cops, but they can harass you. They'll shake you down, you know, for 200 pesos or so. Real scumbags, uh, usually. You can look at those gypsum hills in the distance. Anyway, today we're going to be going up this mountain at Cerro uh, El Potosi. And uh, we're going to see what we can find up there. It's a pretty cool pine species at the top. Uh, it goes up to, I don't know, what do you think, like 10,000 feet? I, got, I forget how high it gets. Anyway, you can see you got a little tower up there. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll check it out and see what they got going on. So we got the, the limestone and the gypsum here. And then we got, uh, I believe that's mostly just more Cretaceous uh, uh, marine sediments. So uh, we'll see what it looks like up there. Anyway, that's Cerro El Poto Sea. Again, we're going to be going all the way to the top. Okay, so now we're at an elevation of about 6,600 feet. You can see we got this beautiful rustic cobble road we're going up. Uh, we got Baccarus teroneoides right here. Actually going to seed. Maybe I'll collect some of that seed. Uh, So-called teroneoides because it looks like a pteronia, which is a genus in South Africa. And over here we got a species of ash. This is Fraxinus cuspidata, and it's in full flower. So olive family oleaceae. Look at those beautiful... Look at those beautiful flowers. Look at that. Four petals coming off there. Smells pretty good. You have to dissect one of those to see the uh, stamens inside. But, uh, you know, looking like it's uh, insect pollinated, of course. Otherwise, it'd just be dumping all that pollen, all that plant uh, sperm. Well, actually, pollen is technically not plant sperm. Pollen is technically like a plant testicle. Uh, more on that later. Anyway, um, so this, this plant, you can see it's pretty abundant right here. Uh, and we saw it growing in the wash yesterday, too. Uh, it needs a little bit more moisture than most. But again, we are at 6,600 feet, so we're high up. Low latitude, higher elevation. And it's got kind of the feel of, uh, of uh, central New Mexico. All right, let's keep going on. Okay, look, you can hear the wind going through the pine needles. How nice is that? We got a species of Budlea, the genus colloquially known as butterfly bushes. There's the spent inflorescence right there. And uh, here's those... Those velvety leaves, look at that. And then over here, you can see we're still on a gypsum. Gypsum, we got like three or four different species of pine. We got a juniper, looks like Juniperus monosperma. Here we got a monotypic genus. This is Barcleanthus salicifolius. It's a senesioid, so it's in the senesioid tribe. Look at those phyleries, good giveaway for the senesioid tribe right there. One series, kind of bulbous, kind of shaped like a bowling pin, that whole receptacle. Uh, and salicifolia because it looks like a willow. It's got willow leaves. Unfortunately, none of these are really in flower. Looks like they're mostly done. Okay, so now we're up at about 7,000 feet. Let's see what Alan got into over here. Alan, what'd you get into over here? This is my favorite Berberus, Berberus trifoliata. Now, this is kind of a mean Berberus, is it yes. not? Look at those Look at those leaves. Very stiff, very spiny. How would you describe them, Alan? Are they, are they pleasant to touch? Oh, yeah. I mean, this one's super triangular. They're not very pleasant to touch, though, are they? Would you I mean, would you caress really it? Sharp. Would you caress it? Could you see yourself caressing this plant? I like dangerous plants, so I like it. Perhaps whilst laying naked on a fluffy bed with a white comforter, you could caress this plant. I mean, <laughs> I, I might do that, you know. The flowers are very, uh, very cool when they're going off, too. There's one just starting. One of the first to bloom, and they were blooming in West Texas despite the very dry and windy weather. But you could see how they avoid being eaten. So Berberidaceae is the family here. Somewhat somewhat basal on the uh, phylogenetic tree, the evolutionary tree of the angiosperm. Over here we got our friend uh, Persia plicata. Beautiful member. This needs to be in cultivation in the U.S. 
Imagine, imagine going into like some depressing shopping mall and they're using that as the landscaping instead of whatever trash they're currently using. That'd be pretty nice. Wouldn't it make you feel better about being there? At least if you had context for it. Look at these agaves too. Lots of, uh, lots of agaves in the pine forest, the higher you get. Is that the gentry eye? Montana, there's so many agaves, it's very hard to figure them out. Oh look, and there's a madrone, Arbutus halopensis. Look at that beautiful limestone substrate as well. Let's take a closer look at the madrones. Look, we're starting to get all these oak seedlings on a, on a ground right here. All these oak seedlings coming off. Mexico is the center of oak diversity. They've just been, uh, as the climate's changed throughout the ages, they've just been going up and down uh, those uh, latitudes. Now this is not an oak. Who do we got hanging out on there? I don't know, some kind of bug. This is a uh, Arbutus halopensis, the madrone, Ericaceae, the blueberry family. Look at those little urn-shaped ursulate flowers with the green styles poking out. Of course, these flowers have poros anthers, so that means they're, uh, they dispense pollen via buzz pollination by the bees. Look at the look at the bark, okay, on the madrones. You get this in Texas. And uh, maybe, I don't think you get it in Arizona. You get Arbutus Arizonica there. So you got three species of Madrone in the U.S. Arbutus uh, Menziesii, Arbutus Arizonica, and uh, Arbutus Halopensis. You get this in the Guadalupe Mountains as well as in Big Bend National Park of West Texas. But that's about it. Uh, but very common in Mexico. Extremely common in the higher elevation forests of Mexico. Look at that smooth bark. Okay, it doesn't look like the Pacific Madrone, which has, you know, a bark that's almost cold to the touch. This feels kind of velvety actually and of course further down the tree it's got bark on it let's look at the leaves over here glabrous up top kind of smooth and then flip it over and you got look at those hairs you got all those hairs on the other side of that leaf protecting the uh the stomata from losing preventing the stomata from losing too much moisture when the stomates are taking in uh co2 for the photosynthesis nice and of course it's those flowers up top little red berries when they do fruit they're bird dispersed here we got a, a species of oak that's uh, just leafing out. You can see it's got the Talanzi recurvata on it nice. What uh, what oak species is this? I don't even know. I don't even mess with it because there's just so many goddamn oaks in Mexico. Look at those fresh leaves, freshly emerged from that stem. You can see they've got the kind of like a filiform teeth on them. Quite beautiful. Of course, that canopy will be covered in a month or two. Hopefully, they get uh, some more rain, though, because it is kind of dry here. You can see there's just so many goddamn seedlings on the ground. There's that uh, Barcleanthus salicifolius, again, that senecioid. Such a nice plant. Another oak. Is this the same one we were seeing or, not, or what? There's so many goddamn oaks. Over here, you got uh, one of the, uh, looks like one of the pinions. No, maybe not. I can't tell. How many needles per fascicle on this pine? Not sure. Anyway, either way, there's the uh, plant dongs. There's the pine dongs. The microstrobolite of pollen cones getting ready to uh, dispense pollen. Windborne pollen. So, you you know, when they're going off, you tap it. You get a big cloud of yellow pollen going off. Over here, we got Arctostaphylos pungens. Oh, there's a little litter, lizard running away over there. Arctostaphylos pungens. Looks like it just finished flowering. From the flowers, which are what we use to group uh, plants, or at least before we used to use the group plants before DNA, before we could analyze DNA. From the flowers, you can see it's related to that Arbutus I just showed you. Got those ursulate flowers that kind of withered, kind of look like hell right now. You can see the uh, the corolla fell off some of those top flowers. You just got the style poking out, meaning the ovary will be maturing in there. But yes, yeah, so anyway, there you go. Arctostaphylos pungent, pungens. Very uh, common. You get it uh, you get it in a few places in the, U in the United States too. But down here in Mexico, it's pretty much the only species of Arctostaphylos, of Manzanita. You get it at the higher elevations. Look at that nice bark too. Red smooth bark, kind of peeling. Now well, we're starting to get into the uh, Cirxis zone. You can see that, uh, I don't, you know, that is such a pain in the ants browns. Anyway, uh, red bud is the common name. You can see those flowers just coming out. Flowers coming out before the leaves do. So P family Fabaceae in, in their own subfamily now with uh, the uh, mostly Mexican genus Bauhinia. Ain't got little, ain't got any fruits on there anymore? No, but look at those flowers. Can you see those flowers? Look at it. Kind of look like pea flowers. Slightly different morphology because they're in a different subfamily from Phoboidae. Here we go. One of the many species of uh, pinion pine in Mexico. You could see those those uh, cones right there. There's one maturing. There's an older one. Looks like you actually got some seed inside there. Look at those beautiful scales. Look at it. 
Uh, only one needle per fascicle, which is uh, pretty odd. You know, only one needle per fascicle. And then, of course, there's those candles, those plant thongs I was showing you before. But, uh, you know, without... Luckily, we have cones, so we'll be able to identify this later. But, you know, pines can be really tricky if you don't have uh, the cone as the diagnostic feature. So you can see the wall of gypsum back there. We got more of that Barclayantha salicifolia. So we're just going gangbusters, mostly in fruit. You can see that the little Achenes with the individual papus, papi on there, which just get dispersed by the wind. Over here, you got all that Tillandsia usneoides, the quote unquote Spanish moss, which is actually not a moss at all, but related to pineapples in the family Bromeliaceae. Odd to see it not in a swamp though, but in an arid montane uh, gypsum desert. How does it do it? That, uh, those uh, little leaf blades must be covered in extra dense trichomes. Right here we got a species of uh, Gymnosperma. Asteraceae is the family here too. Look at how resinous those leaves are. Look at that. Look at all the wax and juice they got on them. See that? Yeah, we just got a little pony over there chilling over. Are you a pony or a horse? What's the difference? Is that like an arist aristocratic thing? I don't know. He just... You know, he really, yeah, he's just giving me that, that uh, como se dice resting bitch face. I guess he's over my shit. Wouldn't be the first. Uh, look at this beautiful agave. Beautiful specimen of agave. Is it a agave Montana? I don't know. You know, how do you even guess? You know, I got to ask my friend Jeremy Spath. He's the guy that runs that agave in there, so he would know what this is. He could tell what these things are. Just, just one look at them. But look at those massive leaf blades. Just a massive heart of sugar getting ready to uh, send up that inflorescence you know maybe in maybe next year maybe the year after of course a uh, monocarpic so it'll die once it sends up that massive inf inflorescence but that's how the agaves do they think their thing it's been you know a couple decades cooking up sugars via photosynthesis and then just send it out in a massive asparagus like stock that gets upwards of 20 feet tall covered in in uh in flowers you know and because they've stored all that sugar they have a, a massive amount of nectar they provide to the local ecosystem very important is that pinus sombroides over there i don't know and that might be uh pinus arizonica stormier which uh is a you see you, you get on the gypsum right there look at it, just pure gypsum substrate probably a lot of cool shit growing right there but we don't have uh, enough time to go check it out right now you want to come with us you want to come hang out we could do that come hang out with us hey, we took a look at the gypsum anyway just to see what's going on you can see some of that the selaginella gypsophila is in bloom not in bloom, but what the fuck am I telling you? It's not even, doesn't even, not even a flowering plant, but it's open. It's photosynthesizing. Look at the texture of the gypsum reacting with the uh, acidic rainwater. Dissolves so easily, doesn't it? Just like a giant salt brick. Pretty dry here. Got your Nathalina bryopoda. There's a dormant one. There's one that's actively going off. What an incredible goddamn fern. And uh, Persia plicata, a Desilirion. Nice. Got that agave, I don't know if that's striata or what. Some nice stuff. All right, let's keep going on. Look, we got a phacelia, and a rather odd one at that. Look at the glands. Look at the glands on those leaves. Holy shit. And here we go. Here's a, a gypsum-loving little uh, puffball cactus. Look at it. You get the tubercles in there. Flower's about to go off. Not going off yet. Is it an endemic to gypsum? Probably, given how hard it is to grow on this stuff. See, there's another one on the ground. Just blending in perfectly, hiding from the poachers, as well as the dockies that are trying to go to town on it. Rapid cactus beguinii. I guess it used to be in a genus Turbinocarpus, but it got split off uh, maybe a decade or so ago in some paper. Its sister genus is Acaragma, that genus of cacti I showed you in that Agave Alba Pelosa video, but not uncommon. Uh, basically occurs between uh, Saltillo and Monterey South in the, in the Sierra Madre Oriental. Why is it letting you get close to it, but not me? Look, it's so docile around you. Will it let you pet it? See if it'll let you pet it. A little bit. Did, uh, did you pet it? Are you petting it? Look at it. Why don't you do that to me? Well, you got a problem with me. I didn't do nothing to you. I brought got some carrots. We'll give you some. You, maybe you don't eat chips. We got some other stuff. We got a kiwi in the car. Look at this. Isn't it beautiful? Look at that beautiful that tillandsia hanging off the oak nice in the morning light. And uh, here's something you don't see too often. Here's a flower of uh, quote-unquote Spanish moss. Remember, it's not really a moss. It's a member of the Bromeliaceae, the pineapple family. There you go. Three green uh, teeples, whatever the fuck. Three green teeples. And look at the trichomes. What pollinates this, I wonder? Probably some sort of little fly. You got quite a few 
flowers on that up there. How about that? And goddamn Tulanzi, look at that, look at that. Look at that. You doing the cam photosynthesis up there? This oak hasn't leafed out yet. And then of course yeah, when it does, true. it'll provide it'll provide a lot of uh when an oak does leaf out, it'll provide a little bit more shade during the summer months for this uh Spanish mass. But even this, I mean this is a it's much more dense in the trichomes than the uh at least it looks like it than the species. Well, it's the same species, but then the population we get in the swamps of North America and Louisiana. Uh, Mississippi, etc. See that? That's what the agaves do. See that over there? A massive inflorescence just emerging. Look at that. What a fucking beast. Look at that. Can't even see the plant. It's like a 20 foot tall totem pole of sugar. Look at it. That is a glorious plant. Ah, oh, those massive bracts subtending the branches of that paniculate inflorescence. Does he send out pups? No, I think that's just a seedling. Look at that thing. On his way out, it'll be dead after this. But he's gonna put on a grand show. Those flowers aren't even open. Maybe another week or two. Okay, so you can see the gypsum right there. Now we're gonna be off the gypsum the further higher, higher up we go. Here we got a, a beautiful species of oak. Look at all the anthocyanins in the catkins too. I can't tell if these catkins are just uh, post mature or what. There's the new foliage, anthocyanins and that soft tissue before it hardens off, as many of the oaks do. Acting as a sunscreen, protecting it. Here's a somewhat more mature foliage. Now, which oak could it be? I don't know, I'll put it in the captions. Probably my friend Adam, he's an oak expert, will identify it. Like I said, Mexico is the epicenter of oak diversity, but look at it, you get Tulancy Recrovada up there. Fucking gorgeous. So many of these oaks, and they're all, you know, they're all hybridized with each other too. Anyway, wind pollinator, those are the male flowers, of course, and then the uh, female flowers are in the axles of the leaves. So, uh, anyway, yeah, there's a fucking, there's a book on Mexican oaks I'd love to get. I think it's like 200 bucks. And I tried to order one once from this lady in Mexico, and it was a huge pain in the ass. I had to sign, I didn't, it didn't end up working out. But uh, one day I'll get it. Maybe I'll go check it out at the Unam at the herbarium or something. Okay, so there's the dangs. Okay, those are the catkins. All right, but again, remember pollen is not pollen is more like a testicle. It's not like a sperm cell. So uh, the pollen actually germinates and then sends out the sperm cell. So there's a bunch of dongs shooting testicles into the wind. Do you like that metaphor? Is that enough to get me canceled yet? I don't know. Anyway, and there are the female flowers. See that? Very inconspicuous. See those little stigmas popping up from the axles of the leaves? So that's where the acorns, those are the ovaries, topped by styles and stigmas, where the acorns will come from. Look at that beautiful, luscious, velvety texture to the stems and leaves of this goddamn oak, all right? No one gives enough credit to the goddamn oaks. They're so cool. They've had so much, you know, they've had so much speciation down here in Mexico and all these little, these little mountains acting like sky islands in the desert. How about that nice? See that? I didn't even see the gulls on here. That's the other cool thing about oaks is they all have their own species of insect that lays the, the uh, eggs in there and then you get the tissue swelling up nice for the gulls. Alan, explain to me what you got the black velvet out here. Is, is this like something erotic we're doing or what are we doing here? So I set the exposure compensation down to about negative two, negative three. And then we get a really cool black background on this. And I set the, like a fo uh, focus shift shooting to take about 30 pictures. So you're doing a stack. So yeah, so it's like a little slice. Each picture is like a little slice. And then I'll combine them later with Helicon into one picture where everything is super sharp and in focus. But the overall thing we're doing, that black basically gives us a nice uh, opportunity to get a species profile of this oak. Cut open. We're going to see who's in there. Look at the texture in it. Don't cut yourself. Don't cut yourself. Where'd he go? He's gone. Where'd he go? Oh, he must be off center or something. There we go. You got the guy in there? It's definitely you got something him in, in there. You got him in it? Some sort of little larva? So that thing's as a tree matures, he's just going to eat all that and then eat his way out. Sometimes I think Jack could eat his weed. Jack would love to be in like a gall made of sausage. He could just eat himself out of it, eat himself into a coma. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. I do love a rose. Rosaceae is the family here. 
Uh, I don't know which species this is yet. I'll put it in the captions down there. But I know it's rosacea because it's got that inferior ovary. It's got the five petals. Up top, those are the sepals. Five sepals. This may not have petals. and But either way, it's got multiple stamens. And it's also got the dentate margin on those leaves. Probably a banger. Look at these, look at these flowers right here. Oh, you get a close-up of those flowers. Nice. Look at that, multiple stamens in there, inferior ovaries. So there's traits that we use to put plants in families, of course, if you haven't picked that up from any of the other things I run my mouth about. Flip those leaves over, and of course we are in an arid environment. It does have that velvet, ooh, the soft velvety indumentum on the abaxial surface of those leaves. You got some velvet up top too, some hairs, but much more on the lower surface because that's where the stomata are. Look at that, that rose, here's that rose again. It does have petals. We were just looking at post-mature flowers. Look at the ants going in there. Are they pollinating or are they just stealing? What are they doing? Sketchy bastards. Fucking trances. Uh, look at the five petals, five distinct petals, all those stamens, etc. The leaves have not come out yet, so it must be it's either drought deciduous or it just went uh, dormant for the winter. Winter is the dry season. It's also quite cold. Got some Talansia recurvata right there. And then this is pretty cool. This is a member of the genus Dahlia. We have quite a few species in the United States. This one is a shrub though, and it gets upwards of five to six feet tall. This is Dahlia melantha. Look at the fuzzy calices. Good giveaway for the genus uh, Dahlia. Uh, also got glands on there. I don't know if you could see them on the underside of those leaves, those little polka dots. And then there's the uh, favorite flower. You got glands on the calyx too, and the calyx right there. Little pea flower, Faboidea, but the fuzzy calyxes are the big, the fuzzy calyxes are the big giveaway. You can see it's a woody, woody shrub dahlia. How about that? Now, Pseudosugum enzisii, aka the dug fir tree, is not a plant that you associate with Mexico, but indeed it does grow here. What is that? Is that a Ceanothus? Oh, it is. It's a species of Ceanothus. Look at that. Look at those clawed, i.e. paddle-shaped uh, petals. I can't tell if those are petals or sepals. I have to give this flower a rectal exam later, like I do with everything. Get the macro lens on it, nice. Anyway, uh, but here it is. Here's Doug first, Pseudosuga menzisii. And of course, uh, the big giveaway, let's see if we can find a cone, is when you look at the cones, they got those little mouse tails uh, popping out. Well, these are all shit. Let me see if I can, here's a better one. You get the little mouse tails popping out of it, nice. See that? Like a little mouse hiding underneath each bract. It's little tail popping out. So uh, there you go, just growing right on the limestone. Pretty incredible up here. We're probably at 7,200 feet now. And then of course those buds, the shape of the buds can be a giveaway too. Sometimes they look like spruce trees. But uh, anyway, there you go, that's nice. Nice banger right there. See, Alan's gonna get a cone down there to give it a nice right to example. Look at that, have you ever seen a ball moss growing on a dug fir? Sudasuga with uh, Talansia recurvata on it. Nice. Uh, a member of the pineapple family growing right on the branches right there. Okay, so there we go again. Alan's getting his money shots. Uh, you can see that all happens in one season. So it takes a massive amount of sugar. Basically all the sugar that the plant has. That's why agaves are monocarpic and they die after they produce this massive inflorescence. And that's not even open yet. Probably got another month to go and then it'll be producing nectar for the next, I don't know, two or three months. Bats, moths, bees, everything will be stopping by to get a drink. And again, that massive source of sugar is why agaves, once you cut the leaves off, work is such a great uh, plant to distill uh, to, you know, get people hammered on tequila so they can numb themselves to the harsh reality of their lives. So, uh, you know, humans have found a use for it, of course. I really, you know, fucking, <laughs> always got to take it there, right? I just, I see a lot of alcoholism all over the place, you know, because we've created this shithole world. It doesn't need to be like that, but we do it. And uh, so we need to numb ourselves to it. So that's where the boost comes in, you know? Numb yourself from the pain that you yourself create. Okay, well, I'm proud of us. We made it about, I don't know, half a mile without stopping to look at anything. Look at how dwarfed this uh, Madrona is, this Arbutus. Everything kind of looks like shit. It's very dry. It's been a very dry year here in Nuevo Leon. Uh, could be part of the overall climate change trend towards drying out, or it could just be... And in, I mean, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? But look, a lot of dead trees, a lot of shit looks stressed. Those are our beauties are going out or dying down there. But look at that beautiful agave inflorescence. Look at that. That giant paniculate agave inflorescence covered. You got bees, you got bees and flies and with the shit. Yeah, you got a couple around there. Look at those long styles poking out. The styles longer than the stamens. The stamens just having those dangling anthers off of them. Look at it. 
Just a massive source of nectar. They're very important to have here in the ecosystem. Okay, so you don't want to get rid of all of them. That's why, you know, even though uh, it may not directly benefit us if it's not uh, being farmed, we still want to keep it around because it's feeding everything that lives here. And we're not, you know, we're not these shit for brain primates, I'd like to think, that uh, just get rid of anything unless it benefits us, you know? Get rid of anything that doesn't benefit us. There's that Persia placata going. Look at it, even a Hummer's going for it. Look, even a Hummer's going for it. Everybody's on a wind. He's wind's fucking with him a little bit, throwing him off a little bit. Look at all the look at all the bees coming there too. Hummer's going to town. He's going to goddamn town. Massive nectar source. It's like a giant, it's like a that's like a hummingbird crack. It's a giant hummingbird feeder right there. Look at that guy. What are you doing over there? Look at the dangly stamens. Is he gonna yeah, he's gonna he's definitely picking up some pollen on his head right there. Definitely picking up some pollen on that little rotund head of his. And then he's going to go, hopefully, deposit it on some of those styles. See the styles up there? They're those rods without the anthers on them. Okay, now, now this plant, this is pretty weird and pretty cool. It looks like it might be a phyllanthus, but it's actually a member of the avocado in the bay family. This is Litsea glaucescens. And you can see those uh, tiny little flowers right there just coming off the stems. It's coming out the axles of the leaves. So not a tall plant here, but it's, you know, it's ethnobotanically, it's got some pharmacological uh, importance. It's also been used as a seasoning uh, pretty frequently. A very important plant culturally here. It's a, a recent paper came out showing it even might have antidepressant activity. And of course it wouldn't be a, a mountainous area in North America without a species of garia. I could tell it's a garia even though it's not flowering because it does have those uh, emerging inflorescences right there with the bracts and it's got opposite leaves and it's got those segmented stems. So Good giveaway for the genus Garia. There's quite a few in Western North America. You got one in the Dominican Republic too. Real oddball. Uh, this is a, definitely a species that likes the higher elevations. They're known colloquially as silk tassels uh, in uh, California. Uh, I don't know what they call them down here in Mexico, but uh, these do not get these silk tassel flowers. They get like a little uh, droop, I believe. I've only got one seed in it when it, uh, when it does go off, but uh, you know, pretty species-rich genus. Uh, not many genera in the family, Garyaceae. And I believe it's in its own order, too, Garyales. Oh, this is nice. So going up the mountain, we got another oak species. We've been seeing it for a while, actually. This one's growing as a shrub oak. You can see it doesn't get too tall right here. Flip that underside over. Look at that. Velvety. Oh, so velvety. Very stiff leaves. Got teeth on the margins. And it's just growing on the limestone. Look at it. Look at the look at the surface of that too. God, so, I'm telling you, man, Mexico's the hot spot for the oaks. Yeah, you got some hairs on that uh, that surface too. Seems to be an evergreen. Okay, so here we are, just below 8,000 feet, and uh, you know, seeing this plant, uh, it's easy to assume that it's a uh, a weed, that it's one of the weedy invasive euphorbias from the Mediterranean which is indeed what I was initially doing. And then if, upon further inspection, I realized that this is a plant that is uh, mostly endemic to this mountain. Being that it uh, doesn't seem to like the uh, climate below 8,000 feet, you're not gonna find it anywhere else in the lowlands. So this mountain is acting like a little island where this thing uh, is hanging out. It's a uh, euphorbia. You can see it's got those cyathias with those drooping ovaries right there. Those three carpeled ovaries still got the stigma on them. Those yellow bracts, the little nectaries, and then of course the male flowers looking just like a single stamen up top. Beautiful pattern of this. You got these red stems. You can see it's a, an herbaceous perennial, tends to spread by the rhizome. You got a couple more right over there, just coming up on the hillside. But uh, it's amazing how much it looks, because there are some very weedy euphorbias, you know, that escape horticulture, but there's fucking no one up. I mean, there's no one, there's no homesteads up here, there's no one up here. So. And the fact that I haven't seen this below 8,000 feet led me to believe this might be something uh, worth uh, paying attention to, and indeed it is. It's, a, it's endemic to this mountain, to Cerro El Potosi. Might be from one or two other mountain ranges, you know, within 50 miles at the same elevation, but uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to like the uh, lowland desert, so pretty remarkable there. Look at it, beautiful. Look at those beautiful, but you got the bracts beneath the... Each one of those inflorescence, remember Euphorbia have cyathia. Not those are not flowers you're looking at. They're uh, inflorescences. They're compound flowers. Banger. I always love seeing these narrow 
these narrow endemics. How did it get here? When did it evolve? How long has it been stuck here? Was the population larger at one point and more widespread or what? And of course it bleeds the latex nice. Here's a nice one, uh, growing at about 7,500 feet, the uh, salvia. Look at a beautiful salvia right there with that uh, labia corolla. You, go, you get the opposite leaves, just the slightest hint of trichomes on them, very tiny hairs covering everything. And then there's that flower, beautiful flower. Look at that. Look at what you got up top. You got hairs on the top of that, uh, that cuculate hood. You get the little pink style poking out of it. The stamens, of course, have the lever mechanisms. You got two stamens inside there and a little landing pad for the bees those petals fused into a lower lip for the bees to land on and then uh, jam their big craniums in there and uh you know go for the nectar inside and maybe some pollen to just get dusted with uh with pollen from those uh those lever stamens very distinct salvia calyx too you can see just coming right out coming right out the limestone and that salvia smells incredible just like so many members of the thyme and oregano family it's got those volatile terpenes volatile oils that smell so delicious to us but are really just uh you know evolved to uh, mitigate herbivory okay so i went ahead and cut that uh, salvia flower open for you You could see there's those two stamens in there and the style up above what those two stamens the reason they got that little uh those paddles on the end of them that's a a lever mechanism and so uh, this being a hummingbird pollinated flower it's a red tubular flower is the hummingbirds going in to stick his little beak his proboscis like beak into that calyx to get the sugar inside down in there uh he hits those uh paddles and they push the other end of the stamens down where those anthers are thus uh, dusting the hummer's head with some pollen just like one of those little bird dipping toys uh you know i don't know if you know what the fuck i'm talking about those little weird uh dipper toys the like yellow bird dipper toys that were popular in the 70s so uh and a lot of salvias do this many of them especially the hummingbird pollinated ones from central america at higher elevation cloud forests it works it, it does the job pretty good and here we got another member of the rose family oh and it smells quite obscene why do some of these flowers they smell like a mixture of feet and semen isn't that terrible can you believe i just said that look you got the you got thorns on there you got prickles So we got five white petals, multiple stamens with red anthers, and uh, of course, it being rosacea, we got an inferior ovary. The bees are certainly loving it though. Can you hear that? I'd say it's a, a prunus, but it actually looks more like a, a species of hawthorn, a species of uh, crataegus. Look, you see the styles in there? Look at it. Look at look at the uh, five styles, or f with five stigmas. So we'll probably have a five carpeled fruit down there. 